Hello ladies and gentlemen, hey friends, uh, this video uh, we got a 2015 Ford Focus SE, this is a hatchback with uh, rear suspension damage, it's got a 2.0 liter 4 cylinder engine and we're going to try to replace on this passenger side rear this uh, trailing arm or also known as a control arm or upper control arm uh, most people call it a trailing arm being a rear control arm and the part that we will try to replace looks like this and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the damage that is on there we'll take this wheel off I got it on uh, a hydraulic jack we'll go ahead and take the wheel off using the air tool and you're gonna need a 20 millimeter socket to for the lug nuts if you don't have air tools you should loosen the lug nuts while the vehicle is on the floor Okay, so this trailing arm right here, and it's the same piece as this one right here. There's a difference in the part being this is the drum brakes. This hatchback Ford Focus got the drum brakes, and the part I picked up, they gave me the wrong one. It's got disc brakes. As you can see, this is a rotor, and there's a drum brake, this one here. So the damage is right here. Instead of being straight, just like this piece right here, that's straight. This piece right here, it's not straight. It's bent. It's got a damage to it from impact. And hopefully you can see it better maybe this way. Okay, right there. So I'm gonna try and remove the rotor and the wheel hub from this part and see if it's compatible with this one so we can replace, remove and replace it. So let's check it out. So they look pretty much about the same thing. The trailing arm, control arm. This trailing arm for focus kind of makes them two different types of brakes they got the drum brakes and some models they got disc brakes which is very confusing so we're gonna flip this trailing arm to the side we're gonna try to remove that uh, the disc the rotor and the hub wheel hub there and actually a bit hard to do with the camera on hand compressor kicked in there okay as you can see there's basically four bolts there I disconnected the speed sensor and removed it uh, it's kind of on the way right there one more to go three of them are out is out too so we got these four bolts kind of look like that they basically look like it looks like they hold the rotor and the wheel hub to this trailing arm 
so I'm gonna go ahead and use flat blade screwdriver or something else to kind of remove that um, so so okay guys um, to remove the rotor and the wheel hub this piece I just removed it basically I hung this trailing arm over here sprayed some PB blaster some of this gave it five ten minutes and used my sledge hammer the eight pound sledge hammer hit it about five six times right dead center over here and it popped right out uh, I just thought it was a more efficient and effective way to do it so we got this piece now here next we're gonna try and remove the damaged trailing arm okay next we're gonna disconnect this speed sensor it is connected on the back of this uh, rotor the drum brake the wheel hub to disconnect it you're just going to press on this piece right here uh, it's kind of connected this way it goes towards you so to disconnect it you're just gonna press this piece right here and pull it away from you and then remove these little clips there's one there's two right here Okay, to remove that one, I just heat on it a couple of times. And sometimes you just have to use a screwdriver. doesn't want to come out and there okay now we have this thing out a little hard to do with one hand holding the camera here okay next we're gonna remove the there is a bushing oops right here I'm getting underneath the vehicle and here as you can see the damage is right over here it's kind of bent at the bushing here and bent right over here so we're gonna using a 15 uh, where is it 15 millimeter socket we're gonna remove try to remove this bolt right here and this bolt right over here so this one these two they're 15 millimeters and we're gonna try to do that right off and here's a second one right there came right off as well two 15 millimeter bolts and okay we're gonna do the next step Okay guys, next step in removing the trailing arm after disconnecting that uh, bushing at the front end here, we're going to try to remove the bottom part of this shock absorber right here. And the shock absorber, the bottom piece, is connected to this trailing arm 
or control arm or the spindle as well right there and it is a 15 millimeter bolt as well so i don't know how i can get a better view uh maybe this way right here uh, we're gonna try to remove that next because it doesn't uh actually hold uh it's not very important holding the piece together so we're gonna do that it's the 15 millimeter bolt coming right off as you can see the shock absorber is loose and i'm gonna go ahead and put that back there so we still have this lower control arm with the spring connected this piece is still holding it and we still have these additional control joints right here this piece still holding connected to that there's a lower one still connected so in total we still have three pieces I can count that are still connected to the trailing arm so let's remove those next okay so next we're gonna try to remove this 15 millimeter bolt that uh, holds the trailing arm with connected to this link here control link and we're going to try to remove the bottom piece first because the top one is holding it together and it is easier to access we'll leave that try to leave that for the last and this piece right here is basically located on your new part it's going to be at the bottom part right there the nice thing about working on these parts here is the nuts are all welded in there as you can see this one's welded that part there is welded the bottom piece here is welded so everything's welded nicely in in place so it makes your job a bit easier and so let's remove that the bottom piece right there right out okay lots of nuts and bolts gentlemen so Let's not get too confusing here. Okay, next we're gonna try to remove. There's two more pieces, I believe, still holding the trailing arm. That is this one here, connected to the lower control arm and the spring there. And then there's the upper link here. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we should choose. Let's see which one we should remove next. Um, so, okay guys, next we're gonna do the, remove the 15, 15 millimeter bolt from the upper link. And as you can see, this one here is 15 millimeter bolt. So let's remove, I already kind of loosened it a little bit. Let's remove that. <laughs> doesn't want to come out yet I'll take a little bit of shaking and moving that okay basically we remove that one out so you, with two hands you just get a wiggle and jiggle and pull it out okay there's that so our next job is to remove this wire cable that's connected to the drum it's part of the braking system and this one with the brake fluid so so far we have this last piece 15 millimeter bolt connected to the lower control arm holding this trailing arm we don't want to remove that yet because it's holding it together and to remove this piece we're gonna disconnect it from here using a seven millimeter socket um, it's also 9 30, uh, 30 seconds of an uh, inch. Okay, right there. And okay. Yeah, it's holding pretty hard. I removed that. I sprayed a little bit of PB blaster right over here. So the way to remove this is, it 
one of the ends it has to be pushed in to the center and then down it should snap right out so we'll try to do that next okay guys uh i'm having a little hard time removing this uh brake line this is your emergency brake line it's basically a steel wire right here and uh, this piece i'm having a hard time removing it so we'll do that uh next later as you can see i pulled it down a little bit and the brake line is hanging here this is a dangerous case i haven't removed this piece it's gonna be leaking so be careful as to not to damage this brake line um, it can take a couple pounds of strain to it it's not that weak uh, i still have this bolt hanging here next we're gonna try to remove this drum rotor drum brake uh, so that we can play a little bit so that we can remove the this uh, emergency brake oh remember when you're trying to remove this uh, you've got your emergency uh, parking brakes on you have to put them down make sure you put something under the back of the vehicle in front in this case I put a rotor so it doesn't move back and forth the vehicle is still parked so it shouldn't be moving left or right front or forward uh, so we are going to use an 11 millimeter socket there's four bolts connecting four bolts that look like this 11 millimeter connecting right on the inside they hold the trailing arm they connect the drum brake this piece holding it to the trailing arm so we're gonna go ahead and remove those Hopefully we can access that. There goes my compressor again. That's the first one. Second one right there. Okay guys, we just had a major breakthrough in this case. I sprayed a little bit of, after removing the these four bolts, I sprayed a little bit of BB Blaster, gave it a couple of minutes, and with my chisel, put the chisel between the drum brakes, this piece, wheel hub, and the trailing arm and pried it slightly gently up this way from left and right sides after two three times it slowly started coming off and all of a sudden this wheel bearing the wheel hub fell off on the floor and as you can see this piece is loose and let me show you here 
from this part we can remove this emergency brake line just like that actually it came almost on its own and it should be a we should be able to remove it from that other side as you can see we have that removed uh, there's a slight damage right there but I don't see why uh, it's still good to work it should still work and you can see that bent part right here now that we have those pieces out we've got this piece out we're going to try to remove this last bolt and remove the trailing arm and replace it with a new one I mean it's it's a used one but it's still good it's got like 50,000 miles on it I got it from a uh, used parts basically a junkyard is what it is. okay now the weight on this piece is about two to three pounds so I'll just set it on the floor there that's not too heavy shouldn't be too dangerous I know you're not supposed to let it hang like that, but I'm um, being a little bit uh, efficient, I guess. All right, there it goes. 15 millimeter bolt from the lower control arm to the trailing arm. Uh, we got that piece removed as well. Okay, next we're gonna just remove that piece. Be right back. So I removed that trailing arm and to show you the difference right here, basically this is the old damaged one. As you can see, here's the damage. And this is the replacement used part. So right there. Basically, you see how it's bent? That's the difference. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this guy back in there. All right, gents. Next, we're gonna do uh, put the trailing arm back in there. We put this piece, let's see, the little bolt, this bolt right here to hold it together and put the drum brakes back. And so there's this four bolts, the 11 millimeter bolts on the back. I'm going to try to tighten those and let's see how we can get in there. It'll be a bit hard to do. Let's see this setup. Go forward motion. So we're going to try to screw all those four tight in there. 
so okay guys we almost forgot about the emergency brake lines this steel wire right here um, I also forgot to mention before you take this off you're gonna take a screwdriver on top of this piece it's got these little tabs you have to kind of pull them up just like that you can do both sides or the side that you're gonna be removing it from so basically before we put the screws back the 11 millimeters and tighten this uh, drum brake be sure to put this emergency brake lining back on there and then afterwards you can just use the plier and kind of pull that tab down and be sure to put the 11 millimeter bolt right there and you screw it back in there so that it holds the emergency brake lining the wire there yeah that piece the 11 uh, the seven millimeter bolt goes to that plastic so don't over tighten that and next we'll just try to put the things back together and screw the bolts okay so uh, it's winter sorry it's starting to get dark hope you can still see it I put the trailing arm back we finished with that piece the brake lining and two 50 millimeter bolts over on the bushings they're put back together now remember don't loose uh, don't tighten them all the way just tighten them halfway so that you have some wiggle playroom around it to put the other bolts back okay we put the top 15 millimeter on that uh, control link the bottom 15 millimeter here uh, nothing's too tight yet I still have I, I still have to tighten the 50 millimeter for the lower control arm all the way in and we also put the 15 millimeter on the shock absorber there as you can see it's right here and it's not all the way tight there's quarter of an inch room to still play with it and we will tighten everything once everything's put back together so next i'm going to tighten this one get it all the way in and tighten everything back together and we will put the cover on the drum brakes here on the wheel hub and hopefully put the tire back and lower the vehicle okay guys uh, I tightened all the 50 millimeter bolts the lower control arm right here the shock absorber at the bottom right here hard to see okay it goes right on the other end right there 50 millimeter bolt the upper control link this little arm 50 millimeters tightened the bottom one is tightened and there's the two the bushing the joint right there i hope you can see it's to the left the inner side and the outer side that's tightened i tightened that one so you should also reconnect your uh, speed sensor or abs sensor it was right there on the other side it snaps right here and the second clip here snaps right back there's a third one right on the other side it's hard to see let me get a good view of it for you okay so it is this one right here that one and then on the inner side the connector you just plug it right back in it kind of snap clicks and that's how you know it's in place next we will just uh, go ahead and put the wheel back on the vehicle and take it off the jack stands lower it and start it and I think it should be good to go after that so let's put the wheel back on nuts back on it and it's a 20 millimeter lug nut there's five of them if you got air tools it's very handy 
If not, I recommend if you're going to be doing a little bit of work here and there in your garage, I recommend buying a glider chute for a, at least a 15 gallon, 20 gallon tank. Put the 20 millimeter lug nut socket back on there and tighten the lug nut. You go kind of start formation two to three times and uh, it's tied now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and lower the vehicle, and that's it. Job complete. Good luck with yours. Be careful out there. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, subscribe and hit the like button if it was helpful to you. Thank you.